Charles II, part one. Through the world in various fortune. By Mike Walker. Whitehall, London. Friday the 3rd of September, 1658. Brussels, Spanish Netherlands, 1658, one week later. Done. I, 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 Come on. Take your time. The devil is dead. Charles, are you all right? Now it begins. I give you joy of it, brother. We should go. What else? Any word of how? God. God took him. What, no hand? No man's sword? They say a fever. No musket, no axe, no rope. I'm sorry for it. I wanted to look into the bastard's eyes as he died. They say a great storm came that night. Trees fell all over England. The rivers rose up. Lightning struck at the churches. They say it was Satan punching his ticket for hell. I find they say a great many things. Thank you for your news, sir. Your reward will be... Do you hear them, Charles? Oh, God be praised, we're going home at last. Hush now, Jimmy. Hush. Something happened, that's all. What happens next? That's what matters now. I give you joy of the news, sir. I've taken the liberty of drafting a... Proclamation. A bit of a liberty indeed, Hyde. I would be remiss if I had not prepared for every eventuality. I think it's vital we get this out as soon as possible, sir. Please to read the main points. Well, basically you state, one, that God has exercised his judgment. Divine judgment. Uh, divine. <laughs> Noted. Upon the regicide O. Cromwell. Two, that any continuance of the protectorate in whatever form will be illegal and ungodly. So-called protectorate. So-called protectorate. Noted. Uh, three, that all men should take it... Of whatever condition. You think? Everybody. Of whatever condition should take it upon themselves to overthrow, bring down, or otherwise annoy said so-called protectorate in whatsoever form Once a lawyer. it may exist. And four, that officials of the so-called protectorate no longer have authority or jurisdiction and should surrender their offices forthwith. We should keep it short and sharp. Ah, yes. Short and sharp. I remember when first we met, you and I. Whitehall, London, 1640. Charles, Prince of Wales, is ten years old. Do you not know, boy? No one enters this place without being invited. Not even the king, or his wealth. <laughs> I have a message from If Mr. Speaker and honourable members will allow me, I move we invite the Prince of Wales to enter this house. So moved. You may enter, sir. I thank you, Mr. Pym. Well, the boy has man. Uh, more than his father. <laughs> gentlemen, gentlemen, let us hear the Prince. There are those who say you hear the prince and his family more than is seemly, Mr. Hyde. If you have any complaint, Mr. Pym, I suggest you raise it in a proper manner at a proper time. This is neither. I am no friend to the abuse of power, wherever it raises its head. 
There is a dragon that has for too long yeah. raised its horrid head and scorched us all with the breath of Rome. Yeah. I take it the boy His intends... Royal Highness! May I not speak then? Very well, your Royal Highness. <laughs> Go on, sir. His Majesty has... I have... I, I bring the warrant for the execution of the Earl of Strafford, duly signed by my, uh, His Majesty, my... Your dad? <laughs> Get on with it! <laughs> the King has commanded me to say once again that he has never known a better, a finer public servant than the Earl of Strafford. Oh, and in acceding to the wishes of this House, this Parliament, he asks if... It, it, if without the discontentment of my people, if the Earl Strafford may not be permitted to live out his life in no, close confinement no, no, no. rather than rather than face execution, if so, it would give the king, uh, render the king, an unspeakable contentment. He asks for your mercy. There is no mercy to be found here. Only justice. Is it justice? But well, the charges against him were shown to be rubbish. That, that you just went and made an order for his execution anyway. Is that justice? How is that justice? This house is the voice of the people. Yeah. Yeah. Justice resides in the people as grace resides in God the Father. It's not right! Do you have more to read? Or are you done? Done! Done! done. 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 His Majesty says that, that if nothing less than the death penalty will content his people, then let it stand, let justice be done, but, no, 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 but it would be a great charity and mercy if you would allow Strafford at least some days to attend to his farewells and affairs, if he may live until Saturday. I can see why the King sent a boy about this business, since no man could stomach it. The warrant is dated for tomorrow at 11 o'clock of the morning. The Earl of Strafford will die tomorrow at 11 o'clock of the morning. It's time for a little short and sharp honesty. And there is not much that will make Strafford shorter than the sharp edge of an axe. I'll see you outside. There's your justice! I'm sorry you had to go through that. You're a member of Parliament, aren't you? You know I am, Charles. I didn't give you permission to use my name. You aren't different to the rest of them. You know how it is when you make friends with people. What do you know about friends, any of you? It's the same with enemies. You should always try and make your enemies. Don't let it happen because you feel hurt or angry. What do you know? I know you didn't want to be in there. I don't even really like him, Strafford. You know, he smells it's like a wet dog. Wet dog, that's what he smells of. Just a bit, but always there. Why? I mean, why is it so important that they cut his head off? Why can't they just send him away, lock him up? I don't know. Do something else. On a very hot day, sometimes you'll be in the garden and saying, the sun is hot, it's boiling out here, there's no shade, I'm so hot, and what you mean all along is... I want an ice. I want a glass of lemonade, or a cold syllabub. Mm. Oh. It's not Strafford they want. It's my dad, the king. Isn't it? I wish you could just be a boy, Charles, but you can't. You can't even be a man like any other. Maybe it's no more fair than killing Strafford, but it is what it is, and you will have to live with that. Or die because of it. Brussels, Spanish Netherlands, 1658. Eighteen years later. Where is the bloody man? He'll be here. Doesn't anybody understand that we have to move fast to take advantage of the situation? Cromwell's dead. This is not a time for being late. No one can charm the wind, Jimmy. Oh, bloody Digby thinks he can. What he is, sir, was Cromwell's cavalier. They liked him, they trusted him, and he has never pretended not to be a royalist. He's informed. And we need to know what is happening. Get some kind of reasonably objective point of view of the situation. We need to know the state of public opinion. That'll be him now. Did the public have an opinion? Jimmy, have you noticed anything at all that's happened over the last 20 years? 
Well, I've noticed that we've been dragging our raggedy asses round Europe, getting doors shut in our faces every time we ask for anything more than a crust of bread. Well, maybe that's done with at last. I hope so. I wanted to eat the pineapple, not get shafted with the rough end. Which is the rough end? I've never been quite sure. Actually, they're both pretty rough when it comes down to it. And besides, he's got courage. Huh? Digby. He's got oh. balls of iron. English Civil War. Battle of Edge Hill, Warwickshire, 1642. Charles, Prince of Wales, is 12 years old. What was that? What was that? Uh, I think it was muskets shooting. Oh, don't you know? I'm not a soldier, right? Is that the cavalry? Is it a charge? We've got to be there. Huff! Sir, sir, you cannot! Sir, I will! Your father told me... It's a battle! Oh, hi! Haven't you ever wanted to see a battle? I think I can honestly say I have not. I'm not scared. Honestly. Come on! Come on! I can't permit it! You can't stop it! Ha! Ha! Come back, I say! Let's see! Damn! Damn! All boys on their battle! Ow! 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 Where are you? Damned rebels! Come on! Come on, I'm waiting for you! Let's say, less noise, sir. We must turn around and... Do you have a pistol hide? No. I do not. Why on earth would I... Oh. Are those soldiers ours? I, I don't know. They're against the light. I, I can't make out the banners. There's only a couple. Both mounted. Maybe they're lost? We should retreat. Get the boy! Oh, dear, I, I think they're theirs. The Prince of Wales doesn't retreat. They're going to attack us. We must retreat. Too late. Are you hurt, sir? You interrupted my battle. I was about to engage with the enemy. <laughs> and very bravely, too. I applaud your courage, if not your common sense. They were both highly trained men. Cromwell's own, they would have cut you down. I'm not afraid to die in a great cause. Well, that's highly creditable also, sir. Now, I wonder if your schoolmaster here could spare you for a moment. Yes, if it's safe now. Oh, ride with me. We must do something. He, he's dying. He's hurt. Dying is easy, sir. It's one tiny moment. This is something else. This is getting into death, and that's so very damned hard. What? We should give him some. Thank God. We'll make his pain worse and draw out the agony. You want to help him? Yes. Five minutes since you wanted to kill him, two minutes since you wanted to die in a noble cause like him. A lead ball will do the business here. I think I know you, sir. I've seen you with the Queen. You were one of her gentlemen. Oh, we've got back a long way, the Stuarts and I. My father tried to blow your grandfather to Kingdom Come in the powder treason. Maybe today I paid off the debt. Helm Digby, at your command. Brussels, Spanish Netherlands, 1658, 16 years later. Your Majesty. Oh, at last. Sir. Kelm, come in. How was the voyage? Oh, bloody, but as you say. <laughs> Please sit. Coffee. <clears throat> Coffee for all. Well, man, don't keep us waiting. When do we leave? You may leave whenever you want, sir. But there is a problem. Ah. The proclamation. The seed that fell on stony ground. What do you mean? What are you saying? At this moment, England does not want change. <laughs> That's insane! Hush, Jimmy, go on. They've put Richard Cromwell in his father's place. Don't they call him the young gentleman? He's not his father, that's for sure. And people... the people... There's no agitation for change. There's not a dog that barks in the night. It's so calm there. 
There's no unrest. There's no movement for the king. I'm sorry, but there it is. England's a mill pond. <laughs> then we make a splash. I mean, damn it, he's the king. There, our king, the bloody king of England. Less of the bloody, please, Jimmy. And I'm not anything at the moment. Well, you are king anointed by the grace of God, sir. Whether they want a king or not, that fact doesn't change. Mm. The cheese is the cheese, but until it's on the table, is it really the cheese? Why are we talking about cheese? Why aren't we talking about Spain? Oh, come on. It's what we're all thinking about, isn't it? It's the horse dung in the room that no-one's noticing, despite the flies. Is Spain seriously interested in backing you? Everyone's interested, Kelm, but no-one's moving. Mazarin hints to my mother that the French Protectorate Alliance could vanish like mist in the sun once I'm back on the throne. As for Spain, they're involved here in the Netherlands with France, the German states. What about the Scots? You are still the cheese in Scotland. Oh, Scotland. The worst day in the world. The Hague. Free Netherlands. February the 5th, 1649. The exiled King Charles II is 19 years old. Hide? On a horse? I never thought I'd see the day. Sir? Something's happened, hasn't it? We should go in. Is he there? Is he there? What do you mean? I have to tell him first. They've done it. Oh, Jesus, save us. How, how could they? He has to be the first to know. Yes. Um, yes, yes, of course. Oh, damn them. Damn them all to everlasting hell. Snuffer on the party. <laughs> Hide. Your Majesty. But I have. Oh, God. Oh. Oh, God, no. Tell me. Monday, a week since. Uh, two of the afternoon. Westminster. The axe. Oh, no. He was, um, by all reports, he was, he was all you could have wanted. All he could have wanted. And he wore the Order of the Garter. It was the only decoration he wore. He entrusted it to Juxon for you. Was there any word? Remember. He said, remember. Leave me. Leave me now, all of you. Leave me. His Majesty's response to this monstrous act by an illegal regime. He calls upon his brother monarchs, no, scratch that, calls upon all who support, upon all who endorse the principle. Sir, will you give us the room, please, Mr. Browning? Of course, Majesty. Do we still have an open line to Edinburgh? Well, yes, in theory, they weren't over happy with your last response and unduly negative, I believe they called it. That was then. This is now. Everything's changed. All the more reason to think carefully before we move. I'm drafting a response. We for were you. careful before. Careful of the king. Careful not to engage in any adventures. Where did it get us, Hyde? To my father on the scaffold. We must respond at once and with all the force we can muster. And as far as I can see, the only force we have any hope of mustering at this time is in Scotland. We're not ready, sir. According to you, we're never ready. Careful never won the prize. Nor did impetuous. I must act now, or I'm a lost cause forever. Charles, think about it. I didn't give you permission to use my name. 
I would be failing in my duty if I didn't point out the financial implications. What implications? We don't have any money. But we do have Montrose. He's loyal, always has been. And anathema to the Covenanters and the Kirk, and it's them you'll have to deal with, and they are going to drive a very hard... Noted. Now find me a ship that can take me to Scotland. <laughs> Racing, sir. Oh, some what, Mr. Purdy? Well, perhaps I should say some wet. <laughs> or not. I would remind you, sir, that this is a serious matter. Can we get out of the way? Aye, sir. The assembly is ready for you now. Thank you. Please, sit. First... We kneel before the greatest king of all. Ah, uh, yes, of course. Uh, floor's a bit. <laughs> You'll not be wanting a cushion. Uh, no, 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 no. No. <clears throat> no. We shall offer a short prayer together before we begin. Honour and praise be given to thee, O Lord God Almighty, most dear Father of Heaven, for all thy mercies and loving kindness showed unto us, for helping and succouring us all in our needs and necessities, for saving us from all danger, and be led into all truth, and comforted in all our adversities. Amen. O Lord, strengthen our faith, Kindle it more in ferventness and love towards thee and our neighbours for thy sake. Spend our lives in the sanctifying and honouring of thine holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord and only Saviour. Amen. Let thy mighty hand and outstretch to the very end and in the end. Amen. Oh, amen. <clears throat> now... I believe we are in a state fit to address the heads of the argument of this agreement. Indeed, <clears throat> gentlemen, I thank you for allowing me to be present in this place to address you. I believe we will be addressing you first, sir. Is that the correct order of things here? We go by God's way, the way of the covenant, and so must your majesty if we are to go in company. The covenant? Aye. We will expect you to swear a great oath to the covenant of the Presbyterian faith. I have agreed so to do. No bishops, no idolatry, no rich altars. This to apply throughout your dominions and to be firmly and implacably policed. By the Kirk? Aye, by the officers of the Kirk. Throughout England? All of it? All of it, aye. Every letter and in your own particular practices and those of your household, particularly. That is a little hard, Mr. Brody. Gentlemen, should I marry, when I marry, my wife... Will therefore have to be of decent covenanting family or convert thereto. I see. And your man, Montrose. I believe he has landed with troops in Orkney. At your command? Well, once the uh, oath has been sworn, we will be allies. Montrose is an oath-breaker, a traitor. Once the oath has been taken, he will be dead. He is my man. I sent him Can to... he defeat your enemies south of the border? Will he put you on the throne? You ask a lot of me. We have a lot to give. The bargain is hard. This was never a soft country. I must either be forsworn to Montrose or to you. Possibly. But we are sworn to God, and that makes the difference. And if I say no thank you and return to Brussels? Be practical, sir. How? Do you have a coach? Horses? A ship? An army? You have nothing except your hopes. Are you insane? Charles, I'm in Scotland. Not funny. No bishops. No throne. 
Everything depends on that, Jimmy. The throne. Without it, I'm nothing. With it, I am the king. Who can't say the prayers he chooses. It's your religion, Charles. The most important thing in this life. It's... It's words. When we have the throne, I can change things. It's your oath. Your honour, what you are. All that you are. Absolutely right, James. Without an army and an organisation behind it, that's all I am. You're wrong. I'm king without a throne. I cannot agree with this pragmatism. It isn't what we're about. Your disagreement is noted. God, I hate this place. It's the end of the bloody world. All will stand for the king. Well, there goes nothing. I, Charles, King of Scotland, England and Ireland, do assure and declare by my solemn oath in the presence of Almighty God my approbation of the National Covenant and solemn league and covenant as written. I join you, Your Majesty. Ah, good to see you, Digby. I'm feeling a little isolated here. Well, they've got you and they don't want to let you go, it seems. Seems you're right. Barely allowed out without an escort. To keep my sacred self safe, they say. They have a face on them. And you do have a certain value. I wish I knew what. You help unite them. They've had centuries of division, each one against the other, and only for himself and his clan. They know that to go forward, they must go united. They see you as the means. Then I wish they'd stop treating me like a prisoner. Most of them are a dear sight closer to Cromwell than you. They just hate England more than they hate both of you. Is the Duke of York... James has gone back to Brussels. Safer if one of us is out of the way. Just in case your friend, Mr. Cromwell, decides to end the reign of Charles II before it's begun. I have, I must say, it a respect for him, but my sympathies are clear. I've been your mother's man for years. Is that why you're here? To tell the Queen Mother how her son betrayed every sacred oath he ever made? No. Never could resist a battle. <laughs> particularly a losing one. I have no intention of losing, Digby. Neither has Mr. Cromwell. And he beat the Scots at Preston with inferior forces. This time the odds have changed. We still outnumber him and we're ready. I wonder if anybody ever is, really. What do you mean? He's good, sir. He's very good. Well, then it's in God's hands. The God is not a convenience. He doesn't like it when you piss on him. Mr. Hobbs would say he doesn't concern himself with human affairs. That's if he exists at all. What do you think? It's three in the morning. Praise God! We've been pushed on before the enemy. We have him now, sir. Then let us be about our business. There are millions of king's men and women only waiting for the word. He's back and he's winning. My men are becoming restless, sir. They're a long way from home. I give you my word. As soon as we've finished Cromwell, you can start sending them back. Unless they'd like to march on London. It's a thought. Sir! Earl Leslie sends to tell you there are boats on the river. Cromwell has crossed and rides east. He hopes to cut us off. Make a cauldron in which he may boil us slowly. But we should be smarter than that. He split his forces. Your orders, sir. Are we engage with the enemy where he is weakest, denied his cavalry by Cromwell's move. Very good, sir. Shall I carry the order? Never that. I shall take it myself. The men will fight better if they see me with them. It's too dangerous. We cannot risk it. Mr. Brodie, you've been keeping me safe wrapped six months or more. Our men need to see their king taking the same chances they take. All or nothing, sir. All or nothing. Colonel? I'm with you, sir. We're all with you. Thank you, Your Majesty.
So do I, by God. Oh, smell that hair. That's England, Digby. That's our home. They took it once, and now we're going to take it back. God, that's hot. Are you all right? It's never better. Never better. Return fire! Brussels, Spanish Netherlands, 1658, nine years later. I would rather they had shot me that day, rather that the whole adventure was... Gently, sir, those who were there, we remember. Aye, we remember the Scots were not there, not when it counted. Bloody country, total shite hole. You should have a care, Jimmy, you may be king of it one day. Even so, I would not call on them again. I acted from anger and loss. I acted in haste and in vain hope. Anyone might have, sir. After, after that news, after that awful day. But today is not that day. And the Scots are part of the question. They're not the answer. I can't be a Covenanter. I promised my father the last time I saw him that I would protect the Church of England. I promised. I can't go back on that. I won't go back on that. Again. Well, well, yes, again. Then what? Digby, tell us about Richard Cromwell. Tell you what. Uh, perfectly pleasant. A tad profligate. No great thinker. Certainly not a man of action. Can he hold on to power? In the short term, possibly. Over the medium term, no. Why, in particular? The army. It was the means to power. It stepped back under Cromwell, but it knows very well that power rests with he who is not afraid to fire the gun when it comes down to it. If there's civil unrest, the army will step in. The generals will certainly step in. They've been used to making decisions about major issues. They're not going to enjoy piddling around with compromise. There's a dozen who think they're better suited to running the country than tumble down dick. Names? Uh, Fairfax, Fleetwood, Lambert, uh, Desborough. George Monk? Yes, he's shrewd and ambitious. And this state of affairs is likely within months? Likely. And there will be instability? Highly likely. The present calm will be shattered. We have two, three thousand supporters we can call on. We wait until the spark catches and the thatch goes and we sail and land with our forces. We'll gather an army before we've gone ten miles. It's a big chance. You never shied away from chance. But all or nothing, do you see? That's what I thought at Worcester. I threw the dice and lost. I cannot contemplate nothing again. For the sake of our father, Jimmy. And I do not want a war. More to the point, I think English men and women do not want a war. Mm. There's nobody under 15 years old who won't have memories of what the rebellion meant. They remember... I've learned that much. Agreed. We have to find a better way to speak the words we have to say. We live in an age of communication. How many pamphlets are printed every year, every month in England, Digby? Hundreds, thousands. Mm. Newspapers, books, public meetings. You can't pass a tree in the middle of the forest without someone's put up a tract or a notice. Mm. No plays. No, but plays are a, a luxury, but opinion has become a right. Mm. Opinion in every workshop, discussion in every church and chapel, dispute on every street corner. If this late rebellion... Freedom uh, struggle. <laughs> exactly. Opinion. Mm. And every condition of man has a point of view. Every Tom, Dick and Harriet has seen the world changing at the bottom of their garden path and changed not by kings and emperors, but by ordinary folk. Just like them. I've seen a king die. More to the point, they know they killed him. So it's quite clear, isn't it? I believe so. Absolutely. What? When the time comes, we need to sell them a king of England they will want to buy. Gentlemen, the cheese is on the table. Boscobel. Shropshire, England, 1651. Charles Stuart, outlaw, 
is on the run after total defeat at the Battle of Worcester. How still! How still or I'll blow your bloody head off! This is my tree. Not with that lock, you won't. The flint slipped. <coughs> Buck! Bloody gunsmith! No wonder we got our asses kicked. All right, all right, who are you? Hmm? Speak up or I'll crab you to death. Don't think I won't. I've got nothing to lose. Me, I've got everything to lose. Oh, like what? How about a kingdom for a start? Oh, my God! The black boy himself! You'd better come up. They told me you were a friend. So? A little more deference, perhaps? I am the king. And I just lost everything short of my life fighting for you at Worcester. You can sit on that branch. Not very comfortable, but then oh, there's this one. If we were birds or squirrels, it might be better, but... Well, we're not. We're just in the shite together. <coughs> Since Worcester? We're pretty much on the run full time. You? I made it home. Northampton. Only they'd burnt my home, so I'm trying to get out. It'd be easier if you weren't around. They all want a black boy. They'll be made men if they get you. And I'll be dead. God knows I might as well be. You got anything to eat? Uh, cheese. I've got some cheese, some bread. Yeah, you want some water? Thank you. <coughs> Why did you do it? The battle, the tactics. If our allies had done as they promised, we would have... Why did you come back? I'm the king. <laughs> and I'm the emperor of China. In my dreams. Well, I'm the king all the time. It's what I do. Is that what you've got? Huh? Is, is that what my friends died for at Worcester? Please, please, don't say God told me to. All right? N no? Nothing else? God. I mean, I'm one of your people. Your people. I'm not sitting out there in France eating fine food and shagging fine ladies. I'm here in bloody England with a house in ruins, a wife and children, God knows where, brother in the ground, a father in the ground, and that is all that you got. No wonder you're perching in an oak tree like a bloody half ass poacher trying to get away from the gamekeeper. I'm alive, I suppose. Oh, you're alive? Hooray! Let me tell you something, Your Majesty. Now, right now, the Keeper is running the game. He makes the rules and he moves the pieces. What do you want from me? No, I don't know. More cheese? You've eaten all the cheese and the bread. Huh. I didn't even notice. I was talking so much. What a waste. You want to know what else I've got? If you've got no bread and you've got no cheese, then no, not really. That's good, because I've got nothing. Nothing. What do you do? I mean, if you have to... Shite? Yes, they told me to stay in the tree. Huh? And if I was you, I'd hold it. Until Oliver comes by, gets off his horse to have a pee. Have you noticed? Those cod boys? They can't stand in the open with their cods in their hands and piss like men. So... He comes across like a bloody girl and squats right down there and takes his hat off and then <laughs> you proceed. <laughs> Brussels, Spanish Netherlands, 1658. Seven years later. Your move. I thought it was your move. Well, I don't think so. Doesn't anybody knock around here? You need to pack, sir. Now, all of us, we need to get out of here fast. Now? We're in trouble. Put the game away. 
Because? Because we're here. Because Richard Cromwell is out. Because the confusion and chaos in England and all the broadsheets are saying that Charles Stuart is sitting around living the high life at the expense of Spain. It's hardly the high life. Roman Catholic Spain. Spain who has killed, maimed, widowed, winnowed, God knows how many Protestants in the Netherlands. We couldn't be in worse company if we were sitting down to dinner with old Nick himself. He's right. We need to go. Where? Anywhere that's not Spanish. The, the Hague is probably best. Protestant, uh, you have relatives there, good communications, an emigre community. Even so, there's still a problem. Which we can deal with on the move. Does this bloody thing have any springs? My arse is one vast bruise. We need to move fast. This business... Oh, they'll get over it. People forget. It's just another story. Oh. So's Mother Goose, and she's still quacking. Besides, you can't kill a story, a story oh. like that anymore. Once it's out there, it's... God, bloody people. Why won't they just do what they're told? History, I'm afraid, Jimmy. Yeah, besides, it's a good story. If I was one of the generals, I'd love it. Charles in Spain, eh? Probably going to marry an infanta or some such. The, the Pope's millions, conspiracy, and secret dealings, mm. opening letters, monks, the Inquisition, people in pointy hoods with candles. I wish we had got some of the Pope's millions. But besides, it's not true, any of it. Well, shall we tell them? I'm sure they'd listen to us. What is it with the pointy hoods, anyway? Oh, what a mess. What do we do, Hyde? Well, you don't trump a story with the truth. You look for a... No, you, uh, you, you simply find a better story. Which is what? Freezing my arse in Scotland, getting my arse kicked at Worcester, getting splinters in my arse in the bloody... Royal Oak, oak Tree. tree. Oh, oh, that was a miserable... Thing. English Oak. Hearts of oak, eh? as strong as old oak. Sharing ah. cheese with an ordinary fellow. What was his name? It's Carlo Carey? Beppo? Uh, it doesn't matter, we can find out. You on the run. Yeah, the black boy. Yeah, and that was when you met the ordinary folk of England. God bless them. Well, they were pretty much like the rest of us, actually. Except most of them were smellier and more annoying. <laughs> now, that, that, that doesn't matter. You learned to love them. Learn from them? Le lessons of life, that's good, yes, Jimmy. Yes, yes, the king was just like you and me, eh? An ordinary Jack sharing a glass of water with an ordinary Jill sitting in an oak tree, and yet, somehow, he was kingly, too. Good, isn't it? It's perfect. We couldn't have written it. And the best thing of all, you're not there to disabuse them. I suggest we get this out as soon as we reach the Hague. It's not everything, but if it doesn't trump Spain, I'll... Your Majesty, what is it? Well, the last time we thought we had it, five years ago, we worked ourselves half to death negotiating with France and the Netherlands. We had it sewn up, right? A treaty, oh. support. We were going to win at last. Well... Well, I remember waiting for the word. Normandy, France, spring 1655. His Majesty King Charles II, of nowhere in particular, is 25 years old. Come on. Come along. Sure. Majesty. Well, Dig Digby. Your Majesty. It doesn't look like good news you carry. Oh, come on, man. Spit it out. I'm a bird of ill omen, sir. I wish I had not to say it. Go on. France and the Netherlands have concluded trade and non-aggression pacts with the Lord Protector and the Commonwealth. God's name, why? They're natural enemies. Foreign policy, sir. Neither wants a war with England, both want trade. Pragmatism. Your cause has nothing to offer. My cause. God's curse. His goddamn curse on the Stuarts. What can I do against God? Does he have a plan for me, Digby? Does he want to lift me up an inch only to throw me down a mile? Is that my great-grandmother, my father? What does he want from me? What do you want? Tell me! Tell me! <laughs> we need to get out of the wind, sir. Well, it's all right. I'm done now. Uh, this way. Let, let me take the dog. Come on. <laughs> 
What's it called? What? The dog, sir. I don't know. He was a present. We couldn't give him back, but we can't afford to keep him. I suppose we could eat him. We haven't eaten meat for weeks. I arrive at another court, and I look at their faces, and I see pity and an annoyance that here I am again, asking for money, troops, help, asking for arms, like any beggar anywhere in the world. You can't give up, sir. Oh, you're hungry, aren't you, boy? We all are. Perhaps we can eat our own words. What do you think, Calm? Make a tasty dish to set before a king? We should go back. I think we're done here. I think we're done. You know, sir, don't you, that whatever you feel, whatever the despair, the grief, exhaustion, you have not the right to give in to it. You are not and never were your own man. You are England's. The Hague, Free Netherlands, January the 30th, 1660, five years later. Is there any reason at all why we're both sitting in the jakes? I have a man stationed outside. What's he going to do? Come in and wipe our asses for us? He's going to keep this meeting privy. Oh, I'm sorry. What's <laughs> happened? How about this? General Monk has marched his men south to London. He's demanding their back pay, but he's also forced Parliament to reform itself and admit excluded members who are more than ever sympathetic to our claims, as I believe General Monk to be. Holy shite. <sighs> Don't write that down. Think of something more appropriate. Who knows Monk? Digby knows Monk. Digby knows everyone. Get Digby. And can we get out of here now? You could say he's a man of the people. Joined up when he was 16. Worked his way through the ranks. And fought for my father until he turned his coat. He did spend a couple of years in the tower first. And wrote a rather interesting book on war. You've read it? Parts of it. It's not printed yet. He's a very practical fellow, is Mr. Monk. Looks for the preferred objective, moves towards it with careful steps. Getting his army out of Scotland and established in London was something of a coup. There's only 5,000 of them, but they're intensely loyal, highly motivated, trained. He takes few chances. Clear-sighted. Extremely. And 15 days ago, his brother-in-law started publishing a weekly newspaper, The Parliamentary Intelligencer, which has already achieved an outstanding circulation. He writes about the people, about their happiness, about what's best for them. Ah, the ordinary folk, yes. I can do that. But what does Monk want that he can't ask for, but that I can give him? General Monk. Your Majesty. Well, I'm not sure of the protocol here. Who should ask whom to sit down? The most powerful man in Britain or the poorest king in Europe? Well, sir, since I'm not here at all, perhaps we should leave it to Hyde. Shall we sit down together? <laughs> <coughs> Your voyage was unremarked, I hope. I think you once wrote that wars are won not so much by dash and courage and battle as by being able to cope with the long days of boredom and hardship. You read my book? How did a you find... A friend come? has a copy. I was impressed. I'm flattered. And I have endured want and tedium for many long years. Such were the times... And I believe I have learnt from those times. And the times that gave birth to them, too. Again, I am flattered, sir. I am not averse to learning, General. Your father... I am not my father. I will never, ever repudiate him, but I am not him. 
I have met the ordinary folk of England. As you commanded them, so I have drunk water at the well with them, bedded down in hay ricks and styes with them, shared ale with them, joked and wept with them. I know them better than any king has ever known his people. I have come to love them, as I love England, and I want nothing more than to be allowed to stand beside them on an English field under an English sun. And, General, I believe I can make that sun shine again on everyone. We are both sensible, General, of the power you hold to do us and to do England great good. And since dialogue is a two-way street, great evil, too. I think we both want a settled, happy, prosperous nation with freedom of worship within certain boundaries, with freedom of representation within certain boundaries, with a powerful army and navy to protect those rights, and, I hope, with a monarch with whom men and women may enter into a social contract for the greater good of all. What you say is worthy of deep consideration, sir. I do believe the people are ready for change, and that we cannot go against that movement any more than we can hold back the tide. The question is, what shall we float on that tide? And I shall not attempt to influence your judgment upon that issue, General. You know your own mind. But know this also. I trust you absolutely. And I have as much kindness in my heart for you as I can express. And anyone who says otherwise might as well say that I have two heads and bats' wings. I will leave you now. God bless you. And God bless England. <clears throat> Impressive. He's a good man, Monk. For good times, perhaps? At this moment, you are in the fortunate position of calling the times. You'll need to give some guarantees. Which are? Full and complete pardons to all who fought for Parliament in the late war. Set against restoration of royalist lands confiscated by Parliament during the late Commonwealth. Partial, but not complete. With the regicides and the most active of the Republicans to be excluded from the amnesty. Shall we agree that the exceptions will be voted for by Parliament? Except for the regicides. They have to go down. Don't know if I can sell that. General Monk to be appointed Captain General of all His Majesty's forces on land and sea. The regicides go down. My regiments to stay as they are, and all army and navy pay arrears to be settled. A standing army and navy to be established to the levels the Captain General deems appropriate. Of course, and an election to be called as soon as His Majesty reaches London. The new Parliament to swear loyalty to the King. Yes. And um, about the final point in our correspondence. General Monk to become the Earl of Albemarle. Hmm. Duke. That's pushing it. Marquis? Duke. Can you do it? Can you put the king back on his throne? I've got the only functioning army left in England. I've got the press. I've got powerful friends. Believe me, if I can't kick ass, nobody can. Duke it is, then. The Hague, May the 3rd, 1660. King Charles II, in waiting, is 30 years old. Last. Damn. Damn. Sorry, Jimmy. I can't keep my mind straight for one minute. Charles. I wish someone would bring me some news. Don't they have pigeons anymore? Or fast horses? Or... Damn it, maybe they don't want to tell me. They can't tell me. It'll be all right. Don't worry. Let's go. If there's one thing life has taught me, it's never all right, and you should always, always worry. Monk got what he wanted. After that speech of yours, he ought to deliver at least a baby bloody elephant of a deal. What if he changes his mind? Maybe he wants the throne for himself. Maybe they'll give it to him. Uh, well, here comes Kelm. Perfectly on cue, as always. Your Majesty. Last time it was bad news. <sighs> on May the 1st... The House of Commons caused your declaration of intent to be read out. 
and the House then proposed and passed an official resolution to... They've done it this time. To invite King Charles II to take up the government of the Kingdom of England, Scotland and Ireland. And the conditions? No conditions. None at all. They've done it! They've done it! Your Majesty, it's over. We're going home. We're going home, Hyde. <laughs> but it's only just beginning. Shall we go in? <laughs> Nothing will ever be the same again. <laughs> we did it. We sold them a king. Well, let's all hope they like what they've bought, because we know exactly what they do when they don't. You will be a great monarch, Your Majesty. I don't know about that, but I... Who's that remarkably pretty girl flashing her bosom at me? In Through the World in Various Fortune by Mike Walker Charles II was played by Jamie Parker Kelm Digby by Paul Hilton James Will Howard and Hyde by Michael Burtonshaw the young Charles was Adam Thomas Wright. General Monk was Alan Raglan. Pym, Clive Haywood. And other parts were played by Matthew Watson and David Kahn. The directors were Mark Beebe and Sasha Yevtoshenko. <laughs> <laughs>